Bombardier Beetle At first glance, most people think of the bombardier beetle as any other ordinary beetle scurrying about its business on the forest floor. Most outdoor explorers would see a small beetle that looks like it has a sunflower seed for a behind and pick it up. And now, just like an angered Reddit user who disagrees with you, it will pull something out of its butt to save itself, as it's a weapon of ass destruction. You see, within the bombardier beetle's abdomen lies a chemical weapon unlike any other. Inside, it has a specialized combustion chamber that houses two containers of explosive compounds. When threatened by a predator or disturbed, the beetle combines these compounds in its body, triggering an explosive thermal reaction. This creates a high-pressure burst of boiling hot chemical spray that it can accurately direct at any would-be attacker. So, one moment you're picking up a little beetle, and the next you're being sprayed with a scalding chemical blast that can reach temperatures upward of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only is this toxic spray boiling, but it also has a horrible odor that's close to impossible to get rid of. And when you're screaming in pain and just about to put it down, it shoots two more sprays in quick succession, so you get the point. Cow Killer now the real question with this insect is whether you're stronger than the average cow and whether you're bitten by it. And in most cases, no, you aren't. Despite its name, the red velvet ant isn't an ant, it's a wingless female wasp. For its scary name, it is just this, a crimson colored little ant scurrying across the ground and you've got a pretty good mental picture of the red velvet ant. But for some reason, evolution decided it would be better if it got a stinger for almost half its entire body. If you're mad enough, like Coyote Peterson, to get bit by this, the stinger injects a potent venom that triggers an instantaneous searing pain unlike anything you've ever experienced. You'll experience pain like never before, as if being stung with a white hot metal probe or having molten lead poured directly onto your flesh. The venom from a red velvet ant sting doesn't just hurt, it initiates a throbbing, burning agony that can last up to 24 hours. So if you ever get bitten, that's right, an entire day of feeling like your limb is slowly roasted over an open flame. Emerald Cockroach Wasp now, a typical day for the emerald cockroach wasp would usually include looking for food, digging holes to stay in, and, oh, capturing an unsuspecting cockroach, paralyzing it, literally mind-controlling it to a point where it can't even escape, and laying an egg inside it that will go on to eat it from the inside out. It's a pretty packed schedule, at the very least. You see, the emerald cockroach wasp, in one way or another, is a master of mind control, capable of inflicting a fate worse than death upon its favorite victim, the cockroach. This wasp hunts down a roach, delivering a nasty sting to its brain. Now, you'd think that would be enough to kill the poor creature, but it doesn't even paralyze it. The cockroach is fully aware and conscious, but its escape reflex stops. The venom doesn't kill the roach. Instead, it literally lobotomizes it, turning it into a mindless husk, completely compliant to the wasp's whims. Like a zombie drone, the wasp then leads the cockroach to a specially prepared burrow. Once inside, the wasp lays an egg on the cockroach's body, basically fate. When the egg hatches, the larva slowly consumes the still-living cockroach from the inside out, using it as a fresh, organic food supply. As the larva feeds, it carefully avoids devouring the cockroach's vital organs, ensuring its prey stays alive for as long as possible and prolongs its agony until the end. Amazonian Giant Centipede To start with, we'll probably need to give context on how big this is. These creatures can grow up to a foot long and have thick bodies about as wide as a man's thumb. They are like massive land-dwelling tanks encased in a tough outer skeleton and with a set of venomous fangs and hundreds of pincer-like legs. Because of this, the people of the Amazon knew they had one of the best interrogation techniques on their hands. Say you decide to steal last month's harvest of cocoa grains and refuse to tell the truth. The village head would bind you to a tree and the two 
two village centipedes would be brought out just for this occasion. You might think, sure, it's big, but how bad can it be? As these centipedes crawl on your skin with their hundreds of legs, eventually they notice that your skin is warm and radiating heat. Instinctively, it bites your flesh with a massive pincer and releases a potent venom that can cause horrifically agonizing pain that will leave you with a fever pushing 105 degrees. Bullet Ant Let's say you weren't born in the warm comforts of air conditioning and delivery food, but in the middle of the Amazon forest to the tribe of the Satare Mawe people of Brazil. You were born as a man, and it is now time to become one. In their culture, young boys undergo a rite of passage known as the Bullet Ant Initiation as your test of manliness. During this initiation, the tribe gathers bullet ants and sedates them with a natural herbal solution. The ants are then woven into gloves with their stingers facing inward. When the ants awaken, they become agitated and begin stinging the gloves. Now, not only is the bullet ant ranked the most painful bite in the world, but in fact, the pain is essentially being shot with an actual bullet, hence the name. Now your hands are covered in thousands of angry ants biting you. It's a searing, incapacitating agony that can last for up to 24 hours, leaving grown adults incapacitated from the pain. It all comes down to the venom they inject. You see, the bullet ant's venom is packed with a potent cocktail of toxins and compounds that directly target the pain receptors in our bodies, triggering an overwhelming and intense reaction. Assassin Bug Despite its name, the assassin bug doesn't necessarily look the part. It's actually quite chill looking, often mistaken for a harmless stink bug or leaf-footed bug. The assassin bug is equipped with a venom-filled proboscis, mouthparts. When it bites, it injects a toxin that can be incredibly painful and often lethal. Though the assassin bug's venom is designed to kill its prey, including other insects, spiders, and even small vertebrates, it can also have serious consequences for humans. These usually aren't bugs actively seeking out humans to bite, but if you accidentally come into contact with one or try to handle one, they'll probably react as you expect an insect being picked up by a giant to react. The assassin bug's bite can cause a range of symptoms, from intense pain and swelling to nausea, fever, and even temporary paralysis or muscle spasms in some cases. If you haven't seen one in real life, you might soon enough the next time you're in the woods, as they are on every continent except Antarctica. Harlequin Beetle The general unspoken rule in evolution is that if an animal or insect is super colorful, it is probably extremely poisonous. To break it down for you, this beetle is originally from South America, living in those tropical regions. It gets its name from its fancy colors, like a harlequin costume with reds, blacks, and yellows all mixed together. It looks pretty cool, right? But here's the kicker. Beneath that beautiful exterior lies a deadly secret. You see, the harlequin beetle loves munching on the sap from certain trees, especially the golden rain tree. While it's snacking away, it's also soaking up all sorts of toxins from the plants. The beetle becomes a little toxic waste dump, concentrating those poisons in its body. So if something tries to make a meal out of it or even threatens it, watch out. The Harlequin can release a wicked cocktail of toxins that'll make you wish you never messed with it. We're talking skin irritation, burning sensations, respiratory issues, and in some cases, it can even be fatal to humans and animals. But get this, as deadly as it is, the Harlequin helps keep specific plant populations in check by feeding on them. It's like nature's very own, very poisonous pest control. Tarantula Hawk when an insect was literally designed to just eat tarantulas, it's safe to assume that it has the tools to kill one of Earth's largest and most venomous spiders. The tarantula hawk is essentially just a giant wasp with bright blue-black wings and an elongated body. However, people describe the pain as akin to being struck by a blazing hot nail or having your hand smashed by a hammer. It's an insanely intense, searing agony that radiates through your entire body, leaving you in agony. But the venom was only designed and evolved to become neurotoxins and other compounds designed to immobilize the tarantula hawk's prey, the tarantula. 
Using its sting, the wasp injects its venom directly into the tarantula's body, paralyzing it from the inside out. Once the spider is subdued, the tarantula hawk drags its prey back to its burrow, laying a single egg on the still-living tarantula's body. When the egg hatches, the warm larva has a fresh, immobilized meal waiting for it, and it will devour the poor tarantula from the inside out. Tarantula hawks are found throughout the desert regions of the southwestern United States and Mexico, and they're not shy about venturing into human-inhabited areas in search of their eight-legged prey. So if you're an avid hiker, camper, or enjoy spending time outdoors in those regions, the risk of a run-in with one of these fearsome wasps is very real. Black Widow Spider Perhaps little else has to be said about the species in which the female black widows are known for eating the male spider after reproducing. Sure, from an evolutionary point of view, it's a brutally efficient way of ensuring their offspring's survival, but it's weird to think how this started. The black widow is one of the most venomous spiders in North America, but the craziest part being that you might not feel the bite at first or experience a sharp pain similar to a pinprick. The bite area may appear red and swollen. Within a few hours, the pain might intensify and spread from the bite site to the other parts of your body. You may develop symptoms such as muscle cramps, nausea, vomiting, sweating, and difficulty breathing as the venom begins to paralyze some parts of your body. If the venom enters your bloodstream, systemic symptoms can worsen rapidly. You experience severe gut-wrenching abdominal pain as your muscles begin to tighten up and your blood pressure goes through the roof. If notified in time, doctors may administer an antivenom to stop the spread of the toxin. Deathstalker Scorpions Deathstalkers are unmistakable with their thick armored exoskeletons adorned with menacing pincers and a wickedly curved tail tipped with a bulbous stinger that packs a punch like no other. They're the heavyweight champions of the scorpion world growing up to 8 inches in length. But it's not just their imposing size that makes these scorpions so fearsome. It's their incredibly strong venom. The Deathstalker's venom is a complex cocktail of neurotoxins and an entire cocktail of other compounds that can wreck a human body. A single sting can induce excruciating pain, muscle spasms, convulsions, and even respiratory failure in severe cases. Okay, but how likely am I really to encounter one of these? Well, if you wander the arid deserts of North Africa or the Middle East, your chances increase significantly. These scorpions thrive in the baking heat, burrowing underground or seeking shelter beneath rocks and debris, emerging to hunt for prey at night. Once locked onto their target, they unleash a lightning-fast strike with their venomous stinger, immobilizing their victim with surgical precision. But if you're daring enough, milking the venom of these guys will get you an easy $39 million a gallon. Unless you want Deathstalker Scorpions to be hiding under the next rock you pick up next time you're out of the house, join our Discord server for more stings from your favorite channel. Chlamydia Infection So, you decided to have unprotected s with multiple partners in a short period of time. This alone would give you a 1 in 20 chance of contracting one sexually transmitted disease or another, but in our case you got the most common one in the United States, chlamydia. You could consider yourself lucky, as most chlamydia is easily treatable with a decent round of antibiotics. Suppose you were fortunate enough to begin experiencing symptoms one to two weeks after infection. In that case you'd feel a burning sensation as you peed as the bacteria inflamed your urethra. As the body attacked the bacteria, pus would result which would come out often whenever you peed. Unlike other other bacteria, chlamydia will not just go away on its own, as it evolved to live inside your cells without being detected by your body. Because of this, after a few years of the initial infection, the night of fun will give you its final gift, infertility. Gas gangrene. Nothing really ever said World War I like nerve gas, war crimes, and agonizing diseases that you've probably never even heard of. And gas gangrene would probably be two-thirds of these things. During World War I, as the soldiers were being injured from bullet wounds or artillery, it was noticed that some of them would develop symptoms that typically developed rapidly within a few hours to a few days after the initial injury. The disease would begin with immense pain around the infected part and soon after, blisters filled with horrible smelling gas would start forming all over the body. As the infection progressed, the skin turned red and bronze and became crusty. What was happening was that a certain bacteria entered the 
body through deep wounds or infection, which might cause the infection known as gas gangrene. Usually, at the time, the best way to get rid of the infection would be just to amputate the area affected and try and save the rest of the body. But this was the front lines of the war, meaning even at best, the only surgery tools they had at the time would be bone saws and alcohol, and you can probably see where this is going. Whooping cough, pertussis. Whoop, whoop. That would usually be the sound an infected person with diphtheria would make when infected with a bacteria known for giving you fits of coughs strong enough to fracture your bones. Predictably, it spreads easily through coughing, sneezing, or even breathing around someone with an active infection. It gets its name from the whoop sound that follows uncontrollable violent coughing fits as the patient gasps for air and they struggle to breathe because the bacteria is smothering their lungs with millions of its copies trying to move into the free real estate. The bacteria itself doesn't really want to make someone sick, it's just that as the bacteria continue to multiply, the waste product it creates is a toxin that's lethal to your body and creates all the other symptoms. The coughing can be so severe that it causes vomiting because of irritation, peeing yourself from all the force you need to cough, and even rib fractures from the intensity. Streptococcal infections. A disease you probably had once or twice twice in your life without ever really knowing is probably one of the more common streptococcal infections, something along the lines of a painful tonsil infection as a kid. As much as these infections are highly contagious, spreading through direct contact with respiratory droplets from an infected person's coughs or sneezes, or by sharing contaminated food or drinks, for the most part, the disease is usually self-limiting, meaning it will clear on its own. But if you were unlucky enough and your body rolled a 20-sided dice giving you the untasteful one, you'd develop something worse. For some individuals, the body might develop antibodies, proteins, to fight these infections. Instead of attacking the bacteria on the tonsils, they focus their attention on the areas like the heart, joints, and brain. This situation would be something called rheumatic heart fever. In this case, your body gets confused and starts attacking the organs it was supposed to protect. Its favorite part is the valves around the heart. The valves of the heart ensure that every time your heart beats, the blood flows forward. Forward. Now, because the bacteria and your heart valves have more or less the same protein, the body in time will destroy these valves and you begin to experience heart issues. There is nothing really to worry about. It's pretty rare, only affecting 300,000 new people every year, and if you're above 15, the chances are close to none. If you are below 15, try aging faster. Tetanus. If you are one of the 16% of children whose parents are anti vaxxers who didn't bother to get their tetanus vaccines, this could be you in the end stages of tetanus. Tetanus is a serious but preventable disease caused by bacteria that produce a toxin that causes muscles to contract uncontrollably without stopping. Once in the body, the bacteria releases the tetanus toxin, which attacks the nervous system, the part of your body that makes you able to do all the actions that keep you alive, like eating, sitting down, and swallowing. Early symptoms are usually muscle cramping or tightening in the jaw and neck area. If, for whatever insane reason, you chose to ignore these symptoms and leave the disease untreated, the bacteria enters its end stage and the entire body becomes rigid with painful muscle contractions and spasms. The muscle stiffness becomes so pronounced that the neck and jaw are locked in place and the facial muscles are frozen in a creepy grin. Finally, anything like loud noises, bright lights, or physical contact can trigger agonizing full-body muscle spasms that last several minutes and make breathing nearly impossible. Botulism. Whenever your favorite canned foods are processed, from mercury-filled tuna to pineapple in a can, they usually undergo heat treatment to eliminate any lingering bacteria. However, let's say due to poor equipment or negligence, some batches of these cans need to be heated longer under this high temperature. What you have now is a time bomb in the form of a breeding ground for botulism, a fatal illness caused by a neurotoxin toxin produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. In the absence of oxygen, like those foods found within sealed cans or vacuum-packed containers, the spores of the bacteria can germinate and begin to grow. In foodborne botulism, the toxin is eaten through improperly home-canned, preserved, or fermented foods that have not been adequately 
processed to kill spores. The botulinum toxin prevents nerve cells from functioning properly, leading to paralysis. Symptoms usually begin within 12 to 36 hours after eating the contaminated food. They usually involve double or blurred vision and muscle weakness that descends through the body. The symptoms worsen every hour if you don't get the antitoxin at hospitals. Eventually, the paralysis continues until your lungs are paralyzed as well and you die due to lack of oxygen. Leprosy To be a leper before modern medicine's invention would have to live far away from the rest of humanity because everyone was scared of the disease that could make your fingers and nose fall off. To give you an idea of how bad it was, King Baldwin, the 16th of Jerusalem, had to wear an iron mask at all times because of how bad the disease had destroyed his face at the age of 26. Usually, leprosy is transmitted through droplets from the nose and mouth of untreated cases during close, repeated contact. This means you wouldn't develop leprosy after just hugging a leper. Over the years, many people have developed natural immunity, so not everyone exposed will contract the disease. Symptoms can appear after the initial infection in 5 to 20 years, during which the incubation period can be extended. As the disease went on, victims would usually develop muscle weakness as the bacteria invaded even more of their bodies, eye problems that may lead to blindness, and horrible disfigurement of the face as the disease slowly ate through the skin. Your nose would fall off with time, and the things on your face, like lips and skin, would peel away. If untreated, leprosy would cause permanent nerve damage, meaning you'd lose all sensation in some parts of your body. However, with a very strong multi-drug antibiotic treatment, leprosy can be completely cured if diagnosed early before nerve damage occurs. Gardnerella vaginalis infection Almost every woman in the world will experience a bacterial vaginosis infection at least once in their life, probably caused by many things like using birth control or multiple sex partners. The bacteria causes a bacterial vaginosis BV, infection in women, and it's relatively very common. Unlike other infections, it's usually caused by an imbalance in the normal vaginal bacteria, where there is a decrease in beneficial bacteria and an overgrowth of other not-so-helpful bacteria. In a healthy vagina, the normal bacteria produce lactic acid, creating an acidic environment that helps to maintain vaginal health and prevent the overgrowth of harmful bacteria. However, in BV, the balance of bacteria is changed, leading to a less acidic vagina where these other harmful bacteria begin to multiply and invade even further, releasing waste products that give off the fishy smell. Many individuals with the infection may not experience any symptoms. However, when symptoms do occur, they may include abnormal vaginal discharge that is thin, grayish white. To reduce the risk of infection, women just need to avoid douching, practice safe sex, including consistent condom use, limit the number of sexual partners, and avoid the use of aromatic products or harsh soaps in the genital area. Tuberculosis Tuberculosis is a dangerous infectious disease that usually attacks the lungs. It is caused by the Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which spreads through the air when someone with it coughs or sneezes. The classic symptoms of active TB disease in the lungs resemble an unwelcome guest overstaying their welcome, a persistent cough often accompanied by blood or spew Sputum, chest pains, weakness, weight loss, fever, and night sweats. However, TB's nature allows it to have many disguises, presenting different symptoms depending on its chosen battleground within the body. Some individuals may have latent TB infection, silently biding their time without any outward signs. Untreated TB can be particularly brutal, as it will take almost everything from you before it allows you to die, probably in a painful fit of coughs puking up blood. When caught early and treated promptly, most cases of TB can be treated with a six-month-long dose of drugs. However, the emergence of drug-resistant strains such as multidrug-resistant TB, MDR-TB, and extensively drug-resistant TB, XDR-TB, take the usual TB infections into nearly impossible-to-cure diseases. Legionnaire's Disease Humans usually fall prey to legionnaires by unknowingly inhaling contaminated water droplets carrying the bacteria deep into their lungs. Legionnaire symptoms typically emerge like a slow mystery, appearing two to ten days after exposure. Initially, there may be muscle aches, a throbbing headache, or a heavy weariness. But as the infection goes deeper, so do the symptoms, with coughing up blood and a raging fever that can reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit to a point where victims feel 
like they're literally burning up. As the disease advances, it leads to respiratory failure, where the lungs are unable to breathe in the air effectively, making the victim be kept on a ventilator. In an x-ray of a person with Legionnaire's disease, doctors usually look for the same signs they see in pneumonia. If you were holding a chest x-ray for someone with Legionnaire's, you'd see hundreds of white patches throughout the base of the lungs, which show colonies of millions of bacteria that have moved in. Sometimes, if it's severe, the chest might fill up with fluid where sometimes up to two liters will be drained from inside the chest to prevent the patient from literally drowning in his body fluids. Porphyria. One day you wake up to your eyes burning from the sunlight filtering through your blinds. The light isn't just irritating, it feels like your eyes are being scorched. Rushing to close the curtains, you realize the damage is done. Your eyes are now painfully sensitive to even indoor light. This is what we call severe porphyria flare-up. Heightens your photosensitivity, exposure to sunlight literally becomes toxic, causing agonizing burns, blisters, and scarring. Porphyria is a rare, inherited metabolic disorder that would make you the modern-day Dracula. While porphyrins, the toxins of this disorder, aren't typically problematic at normal levels, a buildup of certain molecules can cause issues ranging from the uncomfortable to the downright disturbing. It basically makes you a living vampire, literally. Now, going outdoors during daylight hours could leave you with severe disfiguring burns as these excess porphyrins circulate through your system, savagely reacting to UV rays. But usually, light sensitivity is just the tip of the iceberg. Porphyria can also cause intense, tearing abdominal pains like labor contractions, which, for context, is compared to breaking over 100 bones. Necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis usually starts quite innocently enough, maybe a small cut, insect bite, or something equally minor that you wouldn't give a second thought. But then, the real show begins as a rare but extremely aggressive bacterial infection takes hold. These flesh-eating bacteria somehow gain a foothold and start going to town on the parts of your skin connecting muscle. As the name suggests, they cause extensive necrotizing or death of the fascia tissue. So think of your muscle coverings literally being digested and liquefied in real time by these microscopic bacteria. It spreads rapidly, eating up more and more tissue with each passing hour at an insane speed. The symptoms quickly become intense, severe pain, fever, and the skin literally turning a sickly purplish-red discoloration as the underlying tissues are eaten alive. As the infection gains ground, the skin may start forming large blood-filled blisters filled with toxic fluid. If left untreated, the bacteria can quite literally consume a person's entire muscle groups down to the bone within a matter of days. Progeria. To put this genetic disease for you in perspective, now you're a parent. You remember the day your little one was born. So perfect, so full of life and boundless possibilities. But then, one day, the early signs started appearing far too soon. The hair loss, the tight and wrinkled skin. Your child's body is aging at 8 to 10 times the normal rate. That is progeria. Watching their skin become paper thin and fragile, seeing them lose that happiness as the fat and muscle waste away, joints stiffening until they can barely move. The plump, pinchable baby legs and hands turn into thin, bony arms in what feels like a blink of an eye. Kids with progeria rapidly lose the fluidity and flexibility children's bodies are meant to have. It's like your joints and mobility stiffen up until every move becomes a painful chore. Playtime and running free get swapped out for arthritis before they're out of preschool. So in just a handful of years, a newborn has gone from a pushchair to a wheelchair. And now you need to take care of a child trapped in a 70-year-old body. Toxic epidermal necrolysis. Essentially, 10 is a rare but severe skin reaction typically triggered by certain medications or infections. It causes the top layer of the skin, the epidermis, to detach from the layers beneath in sheets. Imagine trying to peel off an entire bed sheet that's been super glued to your body. That's kind of what's happening, except way more painful and dangerous. One day, you're just going about your day, maybe fighting off a mild bacterial infection or reaction to a new medication. No big deal, you've pushed through worse. But then, out of nowhere, your body pulls the most dramatic diva-level tantrum of all time. It's like your own skin looks around and suddenly shouts, 
you know what? I'm over this. I quit. Now, think of having to do your daily routine while molting like a massive snake. Swallowing feels like you're chewing sand as the skin of your mouth literally peels off. At this point, your body is essentially pulled off its version of a full frontal charitable donation, shedding pounds of skin that should have stayed put. With so much of your protective skin barrier gone, you're suddenly vulnerable to every pathogen, every infection risk out there. Patients often need to be hospitalized, sometimes even in burn units, because so much skin is involved. The main priorities are identifying and stopping whatever triggered the reaction. Fatal familial insomnia. Now, the idea here, I know what you're thinking, insomnia, not being able to sleep. Sure, it's unpleasant, but not fatal. See, this disease is the ultra-rare genetic brain condition in which your body just forgets how to sleep. Your circadian rhythms and sleep-wake cycles get all scrambled until they basically stop stop working altogether. This is full-blown eternal wakefulness. There's no off switch, no escape once it takes hold. You'll start experiencing disturbing symptoms, panic attacks, paranoia, phobias. Your brain quite literally starts to go insane from the unrelenting sleeplessness. And eventually, after months of torture, your body and mind just give out completely as systems start shutting down. FFI is hereditary, caused by a genetic mutation, so you could be a perfectly healthy person just going about your life until one day you get hit with this time bomb of a disorder carried in your own DNA, a death sentence carved into your biology. There's no known cure or treatment, just a raft of experimental therapies that may slightly delay the inevitable descent into that final, eternal slumber. Alzheimer's. Think about how you go about your daily life when you start having little lapses in memory, misplacing keys, forgetting names, the small things. It's annoying, sure, but you just think it's because you're getting older and becoming a a bit more forgetful. But then the instances become more frequent and more disruptive. You're having trouble remembering how to perform routine tasks you've done a thousand times before. Conversations become challenging as you struggle to find the right words. Maybe you get lost driving somewhere familiar. Those little small hiccups where you forget your keys graduate to major thinking deficits over time as Alzheimer's spreads its tangled web of protein plaques and tangles throughout your brain. Short-term memory seriously declines to the point of not recalling what you had for breakfast. In the latter stages, the disease steals away language skills, reasoning ability, and even the recollection of memories from decades past. Your first kiss, your favorite burger, or even the time you subscribe to the evaluator. Basic body functions eventually become impaired as more brain regions succumb. The person you used to be tragically fades away bit by bit. Despite decades of research, Alzheimer's still has no cure, as the brain is quite literally the most most complex thing in the universe. Hemophilia. You'd be part of a ruling bloodline only to have a bleeding disorder lurking unseen in your lineage passed along through the generations like an unwanted crown all because you got engaged to your lovely first cousin. For centuries, hemophilia remained a closely guarded secret among European monarchs, the royal disease, as they say. A sickness that could strike anywhere from birth, robbing the princess of the opportunity to properly take the throne due to their inability to survive even the most minor childhood injuries or illnesses without bleeding to death. So you can imagine the fear and uncertainty that hit royal families who carried this genetic curse. Having to shelter heirs to the point of overprotection terrified that a simple fall cut or nosebleed could kill them from blood loss. The constant, inescapable fear of death by bleeding looming over every single moment as before modern medicine, it meant that any accident be as good as dead. They weren't a royal fashion statement, but rather a safety measure because the royal medics knew a single nick and we'd have a royal fountain of blood. Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome is one of those conditions that can really throw your body through the ringer. In a rare occurrence affecting around two out of every 100,000 people, the immune system, which is designed to protect the body against infection and diseases, begins attacking the body's own nerves. It's like having your trusted bodyguard go rogue and suplex you out of the blue. With GBS, this friendly fire from the immune system causes the nerves to become inflamed and 
and it can progress rapidly. One day you might be feeling perfectly fine and the next you're experiencing weakness in your legs that quickly spreads to your arms and other muscles. Your body is essentially shutting down its communication lines one nerve at a time. As the condition progresses, the weakness can become so severe that even simple tasks like walking or holding a glass become monumental challenges. You'll have to rely on others for the most basic of needs because your muscles have essentially gone on strike. In some cases, GBS can even affect the nerves that control your breathing muscles, which can be terrifying as your body's life support system is being held hostage by your own immune system. And if not treated, even with a ventilator, the lungs will continue to collapse. Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. At its worst, you are basically given a death sentence to be trapped in your own body because of a few faulty genes. In this disease, you can think of your muscles, tendons, and ligaments slowly being encased in an extra skeleton made of bone as you slowly get imprisoned inside your own hardening body as it progressively turns you to stone from the inside out. And the way it gets triggered is particularly cruel. Even the most minor injury or trauma can set off that extreme bone growth. Think of the sufferers of this disease a bit like that old Brendan Fraser mummy movie, slowly but surely getting that sinking feeling that their bodies are betraying them by turning to solid bone. Except instead of ancient curses, it's just some misbehaving genes sentencing them to a future as their own organic statues. Your body confuses a cut or bruise for a broken bone and desperately tries to heal it by creating more bone matrix, but in all the wrong places. So you're essentially living in constant risk that the next harmless bump or fall could rapidly immobilize whatever joint was impacted. However, know what else is the worst disease anyone could have? A case of no discorditis. The good news for you, the cure is pretty simple. Join our Discord to get the cure. Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. Now, you can imagine having a body that's quite literally more flexible and stretchy than it should be. It's like being made of clay instead of building materials. You'd now have skin with the elasticity and recoil of a well-worn rubber band. It's like the universe looked at you and said, you know what would be hilarious? Making this person's entire skin out of the same material as an old rubber band. So they can pinch and pull and contort their flesh into avant-garde sculptures of the human form with ease. This disease is a genetic disorder that occurs usually. The real joy is having your body's crucial connective infrastructure essentially built out of the same material as a stack of Jenga blocks. One unstable joint away from your entire skeletal system potentially clattering into crisis at any given moment. Oh no, I sneezed while sitting on the couch too vigorously and now it appears my bones have uncoupled from their sockets. Myasthenia gravis. So, you're at a friend's wedding, struggling to keep your eyes open as the ceremony unfolds due to your heavy, unresponsive eyelids. Later at the reception, smiling for photos and chewing your meal become challenging tasks. By evening, even chatting is exhausting as your speech muscles weaken. This day is basically how myasthenia gravis affects your physical abilities and social life. Myasthenia gravis is a rare autoimmune disorder that gradually strips away the body's muscle strength and stamina. And for about 14 people in every 200,000 in Europe, this is their fate. In this case, it's having your own immune system sabotage against the connections between nerves and muscles. With this disease, the immune system produces produces antibodies that disrupt the neuromuscular junctions, those vital relays that allow the brain's electrical signals to activate muscle fibers for movement. Simple acts like brushing your teeth, combing your hair, or even chewing and swallowing start feeling laborious as the muscles meant for those routine motions fatigue far faster than normal. The cruel irony is that this disease fluctuates its severity based on a person's physical exertion and activity levels. Use a weakened muscle too much and it exhausts costs even faster, but being lazy also allows the weakness to potentially accelerate across your body's muscles. It's a lose-lose situation in managing MG's onslaught. For some, the deterioration eventually impacts their ability to see, chew, swallow, smile, and breathe, robbing them of independence and quality of life. They essentially become trapped inside their own progressively paralyzed bodies as the immune system continues dismantling that infrastructure for movement. Familia 
familial hypercholesterolemia. Let's consider this as having your own ticking cholesterol time bomb hardwired into your body from birth. And in this case, it's pretty common, meaning if you're the one in 200 worldwide with this disease, the liver is unable to properly remove LDL or bad cholesterol from the bloodstream. As a result, cholesterol levels skyrocket to dangerously high levels very early in life. In this case, we're talking about artery clogging levels that most people don't experience until they are in their 60s. So think of having the vascular system of an overworked 60-year-old by the tender age of 10. Your once smooth arteries and blood vessels start getting blocked up with cholesterol blocks that build up at a young age. It's like slowly allowing a thick sludge to accumulate in your body's pipelines. The arteries basically become ticking time bombs themselves, with their narrowing inner diameters restricting blood flow more and more over time. Staphylococcal infections. In staph infections, you're essentially spinning a wheel of fortune to determine the severity of your infection. If you are unlucky enough, you could get the mother of all infections, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or just MRSA. To understand what we mean by methicillin-resistant, all you have to know is that, as you're probably aware, whenever you get a bacterial infection, you're given a regimen of antibiotics that should clear up. However, in some individuals who don't finish the dose because they feel better, the bacteria left are now resistant to those antibiotics. This makes MRSA infections incredibly harder to treat than ordinary staph infections. And MRSA skin infection symptoms often begin as small red bumps all over the body that progressively become more swollen, painful, and filled with pus resembling an abscess or boil. In more invasive MRSA infections, MRSA can spread to the whole body where we develop something called sepsis. Your body is now dealing with a body-wide invasion of a superbug and more often than not, it will lose. Vampire Fish it's the time of the year when you and your family go on your yearly holiday, and next on the list is the Amazon rainforest. You soon find yourself peacefully floating in a tranquil river or lake, soaking up the warm sun and enjoying a river dip next to the forest. You suddenly have the urge to pee and decide, why not? It's literally a river. There aren't any rules against that. You let a stream of ammonia full urine into the water and suddenly you feel a sharp searing pain as hundreds of razor sharp teeth latch onto your flesh, slicing through the skin of your urethra like a hot knife through butter. You thrash in agony only to realize that these teeth belong to a creature that your guide had warned you about. Vampire fish. These ominous-looking parasites are a species of catfish found in the Amazon basin, with their cylindrical eel-like bodies and a mouth filled with concentric rings of backwards-facing teeth, they are perfectly adapted for their feeding habits. You now have around 10 of these that have swum up your urethra, and because of their backwards-facing spines, they now attach firmly onto your flesh and start having a meal on your blood. Once attached, vampire fish are incredibly difficult to remove, often requiring surgical intervention. Some species are even capable of swimming against the flow of urine, burrowing deeper into the body with each attempt at removal. Loa Loa Whenever you close your eyes, once in a while you have these eye floaters, which are usually normal bacteria floating inside the back of your eye. But one day, suddenly, you feel an intense itching and burning sensation in your eye. As you rub it, your vision starts to blur, and to your horror, you catch a glimpse of something wriggling beneath your eyelid. It's a long, slender worm slowly emerging from your eye socket, breaching the surface in a snake-like manner. It may seem like a nightmare to you, but it is a terrifying reality for many in West and Central Africa. Loa Loa is transmitted through the bites of deer flies, and once the larvae make their way into the human host, they can migrate throughout the body, taking up residence in various tissues and even crossing into the brain. But the the worm's love for the eye truly sets it apart. These parasites seem to love the eye's tissues, where they can be seen visibly moving beneath the surface, causing intense discomfort and even temporary vision loss. Now, imagine trying to go to sleep with a literal worm or worms just sliding in your eye where you could not have just one, but even five or more worms just wriggling in your eyeball or under the skin around your eye just itching to get out. Worse, attempting to remove the worm can lead to further damage or blindness if not done properly. In some cases, the worm may even break apart during removal leaving fragments behind to continue wreaking havoc on the delicate eye tissues. 
Australian paralysis tick. Just like everything out of Australia that evolved to either kill you or make you have a really bad day, whenever the Australian paralysis tick bites you when you're out camping in the outback, you feel a slight tickle on your skin, barely noticeable at first. But soon, that tickle turns into a burning, searing pain as the paralysis tick sinks its mouth parts into your flesh, releasing a potent cocktail of neurotoxins that rapidly course through your veins. Within hours, the first signs of paralysis begin to set in. Your limbs grow heavy, your muscles weaken, and panic starts to set in as you realize that your body is slowly shutting down. As the paralysis spreads, even breathing becomes a massive struggle with each shallow gasp feeling like attempting to inhale through a straw. The toxins from the blood-sucking parasite are now crashing your nervous system to a point where even if your body is screaming at your lungs to inhale, the muscles at the lungs just don't have the strength to do it. And all the while, the tick remains firmly attached, feeding itself on your blood, not caring whether you live or die, as soon enough, it will have a huge juice bag to feed itself. Gungylonema pulchrum If, in the unfortunate event, your food gets contaminated with the eggs of this parasite, as the contaminated liquid hits your lips, the larva seizes its opportunity, squirming its way into your mouth and burrowing into the soft tissues of your throat or esophagus. Over the next few weeks, you start to experience a persistent, nagging sensation in your throat, an itch that just can't be scratched. As the days go by, the discomfort intensifies, evolving into a searing and agonizing pain with what feels like shards of glass tearing at the delicate lining of your esophagus with every swallow. One day, as you struggle to force down even the smallest sip of water, you feel something wriggling in the back of your throat, a living, writhing mass fighting its way up from your esophagus. In a fit of panic, you start coughing violently and in the process expel a few worms, squirming worms worms onto the surface of your hand. If left alone, it could lead to the blockage of your esophagus by hundreds of these small worms as they continue to multiply within your body. Leishmania Parasite Whenever you visit tropical areas, it's pretty obvious that the climate makes them an amazing breeding ground for all types of insects. Now let's say you were to go on a well-deserved vacation on the sandy beaches of a remote tropical country. Flies aren't uncommon in most beaches, but this particular one would be hard to miss. It's usually a slender fly with gray or tan spots, and the bite is particularly painful. When these infected female sand flies bite, you stand a chance of being infected with the parasitic protozoa inside these flies that are usually passed on from mammals to humans. Now, the issue is that it doesn't cause one type of disease, but rather a whole list of various conditions depending on the type of species, which can range from uncomfortable to making you want to off your shelf. The most common form is a skin infection, which causes skin ulcers and disfiguring scars, which may not be fatal, but if acne gives people such confidence issues, this form is 1,000 times worse. These aren't just your regular pimples or rashes either. Cutaneous leishmaniasis can cause open, crater-like sores that are really painful and slow to heal. Depending on where that sandfly took a bite, it can show up on exposed areas like the face, arms, or legs. Now, the sores start off just looking like a bump or discolored skin patch, but if left untreated, they can really start oozing and crusting over. And we're talking about disfiguring scars that can stick around even after the infection clears up. Human Botfly over time, the human botfly has developed a rather disgusting way of ensuring that its young survive, and this is usually done by laying eggs on large mammals, like humans. When the eggs are planted on your skin and under it, the larva develops within a pulsating, pus-filled cavity for around six to eight weeks, breathing through a small opening at the surface. As the weeks progress, one tiny bump begins to swell and pulsate, taking on a disgusting, almost alien appearance as the larva matures. And then, one day, a small opening appears atop the swollen mass, and from it emerges a fleshy worm that expels a horrible-smelling, viscous fluid that oozes from your flesh. As it matures, the larva can grow up to an inch long. While primarily found in tropical regions of Central and South America, human botfly cases have occurred in North America when people travel to endemic areas. Good insect protection and promptly removing any suspected larvae can help prevent and treat this parasitic infestation. Filarial worms 
Now, filarial worms have among the worst side effects known, as they can make your body parts grow to extreme sizes, making you a real-life elephant man, hence the name elephantiasis. Filarial worms, such as them, are transmitted through the bites of infected mosquitoes, with their microscopic larvae entering the human bloodstream. From there, they migrate to the lymphatic system, where they can take up residence and slowly mature into their adult forms. As the months pass, the worms continue to grow, their elongated bodies coiling and twisting within your lymphatic vessels. They cause excruciating pain and disfiguring swelling as they obstruct the flow of lymph fluid. With time, your limbs and extremities become grotesquely distorted and enlarged under the relentless onslaught of these parasitic invaders. But the torment doesn't end there. In some cases, these worms can migrate to even more sensitive areas of the body, such as the male genitalia, where they can cause a condition known as filarial hyperphysia a horrible affliction that results in the swelling and disfigurement of the scrotum, turning what should be a private and intimate area into a twisted, misshapen mass of flesh. And perhaps the worst part being that once these body parts have swollen to these sizes, there really isn't much one can do to reduce it. Brain-eating amoeba It's a normal summer's day, and you and your friends decide it would be a good idea to cool off at a pond nearby. Despite it being a stagnant body of water that could possibly be full of bacteria, you all take a swim. Four days later, one of your friends develops a severe headache that he says feels like a nail is being hammered into his skull. He soon gets very confused and starts experiencing hallucinations and a stiff neck. His parents rush him to a hospital and try to get him some help, but all the doctors have no idea what this is despite all the tests they can think of, well, until you tell them that you all went swimming in a stagnant pool of water, and they look at each other and you can see that they know what this is. Now, Neglaria fowleri, better known as the brain-eating amoeba, is a free-living microscopic amoeba that can cause a rare but almost always lethal brain infection. As of 2023, only one person, a 14-year-old child in the UK, was reported to have survived this. Even then, she was left with extreme brain issues as the amoeba had eaten up parts of her brain. The amoeba typically lives in warm bodies of water such as lakes, rivers, and hot springs. When someone goes swimming or diving in these waters, the amoeba can enter through the nose and travel up to the brain, where it causes a severe inflammatory response that destroys brain tissue. The current mortality rate is over 97%, and even with treatment, the survival rate is still pretty low, around 3 to 5%. Guinea worm parasite. The infection usually starts when a person drinks stagnant water contaminated with guinea worm larvae. These tiny cysts then migrate through the body, maturing into adult worms over a year. The female worm, now over a meter long, forms an agonizingly painful blister on the host's skin, usually on the lower limbs. When this blister bursts and comes into contact with water, the worm begins to painfully and slowly emerge expelling thousands of larvae into the water source to continue the cycle. Now, the level of agony experienced during this process is extremely excruciating, often incapacitating the sufferer for weeks or even months at a time, as you can imagine the pain of thousands of larvae forcing their way out. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the guinea worm is our progress in battling it. Through a global eradication effort mostly done by the Carter Center and partners, from an estimated 3.5 million cases across 21 countries in the 1980s, the guinea worm has been reduced to just a handful of cases recently, with only 13 reported in 2022. We are on the verge of making it only the second disease in human history to be eradicated after smallpox. Tania solium, pork tapeworm. This parasite is usually the biggest threat for those who have the habit of eating undercooked pork, as not cooking pork enough leaves the eggs untouched. Once inside the human digestive system, these larvae can develop into adult tapeworms, attaching themselves to the intestinal wall and growing up to several meters long. If a human ingests eggs shed by the adult tapeworm through fecal-oral transmission, the larvae can migrate and form cysts in various tissues throughout the body, including the brain, muscles, and 
and eyes. This condition is known as cysticercosis, where you have thousands of little eggs everywhere in your body. As you can imagine, if this occurs in the brain, it's pretty damning as the cysts will replace where brain tissue is supposed to be, making it riddled with holes in severe cases like Swiss cheese. And unfortunately, even if you manage to get rid of them, the holes that developed won't grow back. Symptoms can range from seizures and headaches to cognitive impairment and even death, depending on the number and location of the cysts. It's a genuinely horrifying scenario where the parasite essentially turns the human body into its playground. Toxoplasmosis this is probably a parasite you might have, and you don't even know it, as most of the time the infection barely does anything to healthy humans. The hosts are usually members of the cat family, where the parasite can undergo sexual reproduction in the intestines. Because humans have grown to love cats so much and are constantly touching them, you could have accidentally swallowed a few cysts after forgetting to wash your hands after petting a cat. If you are a healthy individual, a toxoplasma infection will usually cause mild flu-like symptoms or even remain asymptomatic. However, this simple parasite becomes very aggressive in immunocompromised individuals like people with HIV or pregnant women. Now, the symptoms do depend on which group is being affected. If it's an adult with, say, AIDS because your body isn't able to fight off the parasite properly, it will go for the brain and begin setting up colonies, taking up more and more space leading to confusion or an altered mental state. If a pregnant woman gets this in the first trimester, Trimester, the infection doesn't harm the mother but instead goes straight for the fetus, and the child gets something called congenital toxoplasmosis, which causes the head to swell up to huge sizes and leads to mental issues. But perhaps what's really interesting about this is that even when it doesn't cause symptoms, it causes people to develop an increase in risk-taking behavior, like buying fast motorcycles and compulsiveness. 